So I don't usually record Catan games that I play on my phone. I usually just play them for fun. But this game, the trajectory of it changed. The possibility of the win became realized by me when I <clears throat> used a Monopoly just before I started pushing record. And I was able to steal four wood. It was actually off 211 for rolled back to back. And I stole four wood from Gray. And I was able to extend out from the 61112 on the right side of your screen and build two additional roads and then settle on the sheep port to complement my five sheep position. And then later after that, I did city up to the, on the 5810, which brings us to right now in this match. So by getting that sheep port, I thought that was going to be my best bet to have a long term shot. It was the long play, the long view to winning this match. Because with stealing four wood, I had three brick in hand and then a sheep and a wheat. So instead of going to sheep port, I could have gone to the three phone port on 11 brick. I could have settled on the wood port, which you'll see will, Gray will actually steal for me later on. I could also have gone to wheat port to complement the six wheat. But I just had a feeling that the sheep port was going to be my best bet. And I would also unlock another number, a nine, that I could have in my arsenal of numbers. So a nine brick, giving me a much better brick hex as well. And the random 12 did get rolled, so that was also the cherry on top. So this whole time with my starting placements, you know, 6, 11, 12, 5, 8, 10, I, st I got 5, 8, 10 first because I was placing second with Brown going first on the 8, 4, 10. I considered 5, 9, 10 going down to Brickport and then if I could get also on 5, 8, 10 up to Wheatport, but I knew if I did not take 5, 8, 10, I was going to be taken immediately. So I, mu I was like, I have to have that spot. This is just base Catan. Numbers don't get swapped with Inventor. This is not Sadisa Knights by any stretch. So I was like, let me do 5, 8, 10, and then hopefully there will be one more good Wheat Hex for me to, to settle on, which was the case with 6, 11, 12. And thus, the development card strategy was laid out, was set in stone for this match. Now you're gonna see that me, Brown, and Gray are all battling it out for the win. Red, because Red was unable to city up, maybe not at all this game, we'll find out if memory serves correct. I don't think they, may, they maybe got one city on the board. Although they had a brick port and two nine brick hexes, they just were not able to hang with us in the late part of the game. So with this seven getting rolled right here, I knew I wanted a city right here on this turn if I could. I wanted a city on the 6, 11, 12. So that way, not only was just the five sheep powerful and the eight ore, but also the six wheat. And I had a feeling that Brown most likely was gonna give me ore, which they did. I would have taken the wheat directly, but because I had six ore in hand and one wheat, I knew I could get the seventh ore and four for one it for the extra wheat that I needed and it would still work to get me the city I required and desired. Now I'm still trying to get the four cards I need for the settlement on the wood port. Although the wood port is not super useful to me with me only having a 10 wood hex, just the fact that I can have three card, three ore coming at me off of an eight roll is really what I was looking for and, you know, not letting Gray have the opportunity to have three ore coming in off of an eight. I wanted it. So anytime you're in that race it's and the port doesn't matter, still, still settle on that last remaining coastline spot on a number such as an eight ore because it's such a powerful number and it will help you throughout the rest of the game as you will get three cards of whatever the resources to your opponents too who is also cityed or settled on that hex and now fives are getting rolled again and I have just what I need to buy two development cards and I thought I would offer a trade a wheat for a sheep that way I could set up a third development card buy on my next turn because I'm going to buy two development cards instead of being left with just two sheep I'll do the trade first such that 
I'll be left with a sheep and a wheat, and now I simply just need one roll. Either a five, so I can port the two sheep for the ore, or just get the eight directly. And of course the random super lucky 12 would also be useful in that case. So here goes a six, I get even more wheat, which is fine by me. I could even city up on 912 if I want. But fives would be pretty preferable. So I can just port for the ore, or I could port for the brick or the wood if I don't get a nine or a 10 in these next couple dice rolls. Because right now I have a really strong case to settle on that eight ore spot. Now looking at everybody's hands, a couple people have bought development cards. And because I was playing the development card strategy this match, I thought, let me jump out early and buy up some development cards, store up some knights in hand, and just be ready to play them. Because right now, I rolled that 7 earlier, and I put it on brown on their 8 ore, because they have a city and a settlement on an 8 ore, eight ore hex with the ore port. If that is not the most powerful hex on this board, well, maybe it's just the other 8 ore. Now, Gray was able to beat me to the wood port spot, so they will be getting three ore to my two ore off of every eight, which is a huge bummer for me. But never fear, I can still go to the left. I can still turn, uh, would that be west or northwest, to the wheat port to complement my six wheat and also get a third sh sheep every time a five gets rolled. So I will settle for that even though I wanted both spots so the robber comes back to the eight ore and it's gonna float between my eight ore, my six wheat my five sheep because I will command a strong tying tying lead with gray or maybe even brown for most of this match so I will be perceived as a threat for most of it and unfortunately they shut down just the perfect spot because I need that ore for my next development card and I am now a little bit of ways away from building a settlement because Gray was able to steal the wood port spot, so now I have to wait for some more nines and tens to be rolled so I can get over to the wheat port. But that's not super pressing. I'm just focused on building up my development card stack. I want those knights to be ready to go so that no one has any chance of catching up to me. And to keep the flow of production going, I said, let me just play a knight right now. I'll get the robber off of the 8 ore, off of my 8 ore at least, and I would try to identify the player who is most threatening right now. So I went ahead and shut down Gray, because although Gray doesn't have a lot of expanding production like roads and settlements, I'm worried about them challenging me for the development card strategy because they have an 8 ore, they have a 6 wheat, and they have a 4 sheep. And those numbers are getting rolled fairly decently. Every time I get ore, Gray gets ore. Every time I get sheep, Gray gets... Or sorry, every time I get wheat, Gray gets wheat as well. The only difference being is the sheep hex. Whereas I have a five sheep slightly better than Gray's four sheep hex. But with the numbers, you never know what could happen. And actually, every time a five gets rolled, Gray is getting wheat as well when I'm getting sheep. So they're getting a lot of wheat production here. So I'm glad that I was able to block them out to the wheat port with my one road pointing towards the wood port because that would have been a huge problem. That might have changed the course of this game had I not built that one road to the wood port and Gray been able to somehow cut me off to the wheat port before I could build a road towards said wheat port. And Brown is also doing very well this game. Like I said, they have the eight ore, ore port with three ore coming at them every time an eight gets rolled. They also have a good spread of, of resources and numbers. They got the four wood, they got the 10 wheat, they got the six sheep, the nine brick, and they are poised to build on the nine, 10, 11 spot, which I was considering if I drew like a road building from the development card progress or development card stack, progress cards at Cities and Nights, excuse me. And I was considering if I got a road building going down to the nine, 10, 11, but alas, I will not be able to build those three roads. So, with another 8 getting rolled, that really opens up my options here, because I have 6 wheat in hand, 2 ore, a sheep, and 2 wood. So I am certainly free to build a settlement. I could even 4 for 1 the wheat for a third ore, city up on 912. And with the knight in hand, I was thinking maybe 
play the robber. I already have more than seven cards, so I'm, I'm gonna burn half either way. Why not get off the five, have a chance of the five to get rolled? And then of course the seven says, no, no, this is this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna make you burn half your cards. And with this, with this roll of seven right here, I think I would have been able to win a couple turns earlier had I not sevened out right here. So that just goes to show you how powerful those seven outs can hurt throughout the uh, the match that you were playing in any any expansion of Catan, really. So this time, I go ahead and I shut down the 10 wheat. I still had a slight inkling that red could get real powerful, they connect with their roads, they get Longest Road, and then they build one city on, let's say, 3, 4, 9, and then one on 5, 9, 10, and then they just go and expand up the coastline around the six sheep. But really, it's it's coming down to whoever buys development cards, and that's just a huge part of base Catan, as you all probably know. Development cards can just stack up. Brown has five development cards, so I was worried that they had like four victory points in hand already, and just w were looking to build that one quick settlement in city, and then the game was over. So as soon as I realized that, I just pretty much exclusively started to shut down Brown for the rest of the match, as Red does steal a sheep from me there, but that's not super helpful to them, as they get another sheep off their six. They're mostly looking for road building materials, because it's best for Red to have Longish Road here, because if anybody else has it, they're going to be so powerful, it might be hard to slow them down long enough for us to catch up. They might just win very quickly. And with Red having a 3 or 4 in port, they were able to port the wheat for the brick that they need. And they build one more road, so now they're one road away from connecting up both the road systems and having Longish Road for pretty much the rest of the game. There's a slight chance that Brown could take it with the 9 brick and 4 wood popping off. But my hope is that Red can just get it done with 3 wood, 4 wood, and 2 9 bricks and brick ports. Should be no problem, and a 3 4 in port. So once again, Brown shutting down the six wheat, and since they're not playing their five progress cards, that's why I'm concerned, because I'm like, if they're just holding a bunch of victory points, this does not bode well for me. I, I'm nowhere near winning. I just rolled a nine, I have one brick, one wheat, two sheep. There's not much I can be, to do here. And I actually rolled without playing the knight because I didn't need the wheat. I needed the eight. So that's why I waited to play the knight after. Because if I could get the eight to be rolled instead of the six, then I could play the knight after and it still works out. Maybe I should have played it before I rolled, but that's I didn't necessarily need the wheat. So it wasn't... I could have saved the knight for a future turn had I felt like that's what I wanted to do. And then Gray will four for one. And they were able to build another road, but it's slow going to build roads and settlements when you're mostly built on ore, wheat, and sheet with the one wood hex, which is an 11. But they did get an 11, just like I did. Gray got two wood, I got two brick. And it's a, you just kind of, if you're playing ore, wheat, cheap strategy with a slight you got like one wood hex, one brick hex. You're you you just save them in your hand, and hopefully you don't seven out. But it's rare you're gonna be able to get the complementing wood or brick to be able to continue to build some roads. So red is able to do just that. They build the longest road, and now they're up to six points. But unfortunately, they have maybe one or or two at the most development cards, and that's really not gonna be enough to stay competitive, unless they're drawing victory point cards or something, or unless they're drawing your opponent and build a quick city for them. And then Brown has the luckiest sequence of events. They use the knight to shut down my five, and then they roll a five. If that is not the most frustrating thing to happen in Catan, I don't know what is. Rolling a seven on your turn and sevening out is just is second to that. I I have to be honest. The the thing that irritates me most is definitely when a player plays a knight, shuts down your hex, and then they roll that number. It it couldn't be more perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> 
but I'm still in the lead with uh, seven victory points. I'll play the knight because my sheep hex is so powerful, it allows me to port for two sheep for whatever I need. And in this case, I need that to be open. Unfortunately, I steal a wheat, so I go with the four wheat, and I roll a seven instead of the five that I'm looking for, or maybe even just the eight directly. So now that I have to pull the robber off of the eight or and Brown's or port, I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll shut down the four because that also gives them wood, and I don't want Brown to be able to qu quickly settle on the 9, 10, 11. I want that to be delayed. So I steal a brick, and I can perfectly not do anything with this turn. I could four for one brick for, or sorry, wheat for a, a wood or something, but it's completely useless. And Gray, thankfully, comes in clutch. And I think that mainly the reason that Gray took that trade is so they can settle on 3-6 because they basically do not produce brick and then the sheep is the cherry on top for them. So I was able to make a trade for them where I could settle. And so I settle on the wheat port and now I have that locked in for the rest of the game. So any sixes and any wheat that comes my way that I don't need, I can start porting it. And right there, I should have taken that trade with Gray because that would have given me two wheat and be able to port it directly if I wanted. However, I did not take the trade because I wanted to make them four for one for it to work for that settlement. So they did trade for the for the wood. They four for one, I think, all of their wheat, which is why they were not able to settle that turn. So in hand, they just got some more wheat, but just previous turn they had a wood, a brick and sheep, and no wheat. So if I would have made that trade with them, yes, I would have got two wheat, but they would have gotten a settlement on three six, and which would have also opened up the possibility for like a maybe a longish road play with increased production. Because if Gray takes longest road from red, Gray goes up to seven, they may have a victory point in hand with one of their development cards. And we are in for a nasty surprise when we want this game to continue on. Because I'm at eight, I can smell the win, I can taste it a little bit now. And I'm like, I cannot have someone win and it feel like a premature win, like they, they snuck up and stole the win right before I could really close it out with a, with a uh, glorious finish. And I'm still, still got that eye on Brown, even though they only have four victory points. And there, that four got rolled. I shut down the four woods, so a little bit of payback for them shut down to my five sheep. And then the five getting rolled, I shut down the four, the four gets rolled. So I'm happy with that. But I still got my eye on them. They're playing knights. They're trying to catch up in knight strength. If they steal Lodger's Army, I may not be able to take it back. So that's what I'm very worried about. And they actually steal from Gray there. I was very surprised they didn't steal from me with 8 victory points. But they were able to get the settlement on the 9, 10, 11. So I slowed down as much as I could. But Brown was still able to get it done. So he has 5 victory points, 3 development cards, 2 knights played. So if all those development cards are knights, I have to be very worried. Because he could just play a knight every single turn and steal the largest army, which is why I made it my goal to just keep piling on the development cards as much as I could. Because now I'm in a very good position. I have eight victory points. I already have a largest army. If I draw two victory point cards, I win. I also can draw one victory point card and build a city on the 912. I could also buy one victory point card and then road settle on the 11 three for one port spot. And this trade was completely crazy. One, they want one wood. And they were offering two sheep and a wheat, which was madness. No, they weren't. The trade did not go through, so they were able to four for one. And they were able to settle on the 3-6 spot. And now they're going to get three wheat off a of six, three or off an eight. That's a two-turn city right there. And the occasional three gives them three or no one shutting down the three or you can be guaranteed of that but they're able to actually buy a development card after they settle right before the end of their turn and then the eight gets rolled as the cherry on top so i really don't know who between brown and gray how many victory point cards they each have from the development card stack it's really hard to tell I'm, at this point i'm not worried about either of them stealing a larger story because i have such a lock on it I could play my fifth knight at any time. Now red does play a second knight, so they're, but again, they're still really not 
in the conversation. I have two victory point cards in hand, so anybody could have any amount of victory point cards. It's really hard to say, but in terms of knight strength, I still reign supreme. And then brown will roll. They roll a five, and right as after red shut my five down. So that's another key shutdown this match, which just slowed me down a little bit more. It's really... Sometimes there's not a lot of drastic things besides that Monopoly that just happened where Brown stole all the ore, a good, good chunk of ore they stole, and they have ore port, which is absolutely terrifying. So I thought they might have won this very turn, only 20 minutes into this video, because they steal all the ore, they had a wheat or so, they traded for another wheat, two for one, what a cheap, uh, easy deal for them, and cityed up on 269. That is just crazy powerful. Then they do two more wheats after porting four ore. And they still have seven cards in hand. And they city up, they double city in one turn. And I'm amazed that they still do not take the win there. Because I still, I'm like, okay, if they don't have three victory point cards in hand, they had to have, they must have two. And, or at least one, at least one. They have to have at least one, right? So I was able to get the knight, or sorry, the, the robber off the five sheep, but I di it didn't net me the ability to build another development card. I was able to seal an ore as back-to-back -back fours get rolled, which the game is just spiting me now, because now, sometimes late game, other numbers that aren't mine get rolled, and the other players just get this crazy um, production going while I stay stagnant. With Gray's road building right there, I was highly surprised that they did not try to steal the longest road because that would have put them to eight victory points but they settle for the settle and then the random two there for brown to really pad that production but yeah gray getting the road building to extend them out to the three for one port which is probably much better than longest road when i think about it because longest road can always be stolen back pretty easy by red i would imagine with all their road building production so it was, a, it was a smart move by Gray to go through for one port. Now they have more porting ability. Really, it's um, with the wood port that wasn't super useful to them. Now they have three for one port that is mega useful. As Brown plays on another Knights. And it's going to steal a wood for me, which was honestly the best thing they could have stolen. Because I'm still able to hang in there with the ore and the sheep in hand. If I can just get a wheat, I can buy another development card. Keep this party going. But Brown is now up to seven victory points. I'm a little worried now. Everybody's close in victory points, but really it's between me and Brown. And Gray is Gray's kind of in there, but with one development card in hand, I'm not super worried about him. It's all about late game. If you're holding like three or more development cards, and you're, it, it really they really could be. It could go a lot of different ways. They could, you could have a monopoly that could really upset the tide, like Brown did earlier with, with stealing 11 ore or so. You could have your plenty, which could be super clutch to build just the, the settlement or the road or the city that you needed to be able to maybe cut someone off or get more production. So now here I do roll the good five, the five coming in handily. And I'm able to port it, two for one for the wheat, and buy another development card. Now, at this point, I'm hoping to buy a victory point card, and I finally draw one here in the late game. I draw a victory point card to push me to nine victory points, and now the end game is super near. I can, I can really, really sense it. There's multiple ways for me to win, which is always the most powerful thing, powerful position you can be in a Magic Baton. If you can have more than one way to win, there's really... Not much your opponents can do, except hope your numbers don't get rolled that much, or they can keep the robber on one of your best spots. But if you have if you have multiple good spots like I do, like six wheat, five sheep, eight ore, it's really hard to completely shut me down. In fact, almost downright impossible. So at this point, I have five wood in hand, which is, if I had that wood port, would have made it that much quicker to win, much easier. And I have options. I can city up on 912. I can city up on five sheep if I want. Either way, I can buy another development card, try to draw another victory point. Or I could just do the guaranteed win, which is road settle. And really, that's what I'm looking to do here. 
As the seven gets rolled, I barely have to burn cards. Because I was thinking Road Settle, because I'm like, you know what? At this point in the game, they know my eight ore, which I share with Gray, is powerful to both of us. So they really could shut down either eight ore or six wheat. It's really going to be come down to one of those. Five sheep is also really powerful because my sheep port. But I guess that they need to shut down both me and Gray at the same time because we're both looking... Like, if we get too much production of either one of those, the sky's the limit. We're just really going to take off. So, at this point, if I steal a brick from anybody, but unfortunately, I don't think many... I'm checking the game long. I'm like, man, I really don't think there's any brick out there. But if I stole one brick this turn, that would have that been the win. The W, the finale. But I think Red just spent some of their brick or ported it. And, or actually builds more roads down to 3 8. So I'm like, ah, there's there's really no brick at all. I steal a wheat. That could have been the win right there, but I'm pretty confident there was zero brick in hand for anybody on that turn. Gray immediately rolls a 7, and it's probably going to come back right to the 5 sheep. And they combo it with the knight as well, go it, put it back to the 8 ore. So Gray also recognizes how much of a threat that brown is and actually i misspoke i did not have the win there because i also need to build a road and then the settlement on the 11 bricks so i i even if i stole a brick that would have just been a road that's it let me just make that clear on that previous turn but i would have been able to build a road and be very very close to the win then but gray also recognized how much of a threat that brown was so after they shut me down with the seven they used the knight to push the robber over to Brown's 8 ore because if they can buy a quick development card victory point to be maybe their 10th, that's a quick win. They still have 3 development cards in hand with 7 victory points. At least 2 of those could be your victory point cards, so that really puts them 3 cards away from a win. Or wheat sheep, development card draw, win. That's very scary. Now, I did get another 9. Thanks to Brown. Brown gets four brick, and I think they got another four brick previously, so they have eight brick in hand, which is just a monster amount of bricks. Someone monopoly that, right? They do play the year of plenty, so I thought this was this was game over. I thought it was GG. They buy development card. Thankfully, they do not draw a victory point. And all I have to do is roll a 10 or a 5 or a 6, and I win, and I roll the 5. Oh, and I breathe a sigh of relief as I know Brown's got to be on 9, Gray's got to be on at least 8, and I'm able to port the sheep for the second wood, and I do the road settle, and I'm able to close the game out, but I think if I let it go one more turn, could have been someone else's victory. I'm able to secure the win, and what did I say? Brown had two victory points in hand, and Gray had one, and Red had one. So this was a very, very tight-knit game. Me at 10, Brown at 9, Grade 8, Red pulling up the, the caboose in 7. But if Gray was able to get a, a city out on the board, maybe a second one, that maybe would have upped their production enough to really give us a run for the money. But it really came down to me and Brown fighting it out, and then Gray kind of being a wild card, depending on how much production they got. But I was able to secure the victory. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm getting close to 900 subscribers, so push me a little closer there if you would be so kind and here's the dice statistics lots of sevens lots of fives thankfully lots of sixes and eights that led to another nice unorthodox win